The daily efficiency, safety and expected life of a lead-acid motive power battery depends on three considerations. Correct use, maintenance and charging. This video aims to help you get the best performance, the longest life and to ensure the safe operation of the product. Ultimately, we want to protect you, your business and your employees. Underfilling and overfilling of your batteries will not only reduce the life of your investment but will also reduce your available capacity and reduce the battery's life. Underfilling will increase the strength of the electrolyte and damage the cell plates. Overfilling will weaken the electrolyte strength, reducing capacity and causing corrosion which increases the risk of explosion and will cause holes in the battery's metal tank. The first rule of battery filling is always to use deionized water. Do not believe old wives' tales of water being okay in your area. All water contains total dissolved solids, albeit differing concentration. Either purchase deionized water in carboys or manufacture your own using a deionizing unit. Deionizing your own water is always the least expensive way to provide the required water and only requires the unit to be connected to a drinking water supply and to have the filter cartridges changed when exhausted, which is indicated by a small battery powered light system. Modern batteries are usually supplied with a single point filling system. This is a system of automatic levelling fill caps fitted to each cell in your battery connected by pipework and terminated with a one-way mail connection that fits to a topping trolley. Some batteries may be supplied without a single point filling system, in which case they will be supplied with individual flip-top ventilation caps to allow access to top the electrolyte in each cell. If you have this type of flip-top for filling, then operators must wear PPE. A safety visor or eye protection when checking and topping the electrolyte levels. It's also advisable to wear acid protective gloves and a rubber based protection apron. Wearing the recommended protective PPE, the flip top should be opened and the electrolyte levels be checked but only when the battery is fully charged. This should be carried out on a weekly basis. If the levels are found to be lower than the minimum mark of your ventilation cabs, then each cell should be filled to the maximum mark of your ventilation cabs using a topping trolley. Once all the cell levels have been topped to the correct level, the flip tops should be firmly closed and any excessive water spilt wiped off the cell lids. If the battery is fitted with a single point filling system, it should also have an electrolyte level indicator fitted. This indicator should flash green when the battery levels are at an acceptable level, again when the battery is fully charged. There are two types of indicator. One, flashing green when OK and out when topping required, or two, flashing green when OK and flashing red when topping is required. If the indicator is out or red while the battery is operational, it should be ignored. It is only relevant when the battery is fully charged and the charger indicates a green light or LCD screen or lamp. While PPE is not essential when topping this type of battery, it is always recommended to protect the eyes with a visor or glasses. Some single point filling systems have vent caps with visible white cat's eyes in the top of the cap. This is not and should never be used and an indication that a battery needs topping. It is purely designed to show the operator that all the floats have risen during and after the topping procedure and that there were no sticking floats. To explain why, the electrolyte levels in a cell will drop naturally between fully charged and discharged. On tall cells this drop can be as much as 25mm. When the battery is then fully charged, the level will return to the fully charged level. The float and in turn the cat's eye indicator only drops by 6-7mm. to seven millimeters. So if the battery is topped using these cat's eyes as an indicator, the battery level will rise during recharge and spill out of the top. When the battery is fully charged, as indicated by a green light, LCD screen or lamp on the charger, and the electrolyte level light is either off or flashing red, then the battery should be topped using the appropriate pressure bottle or trolley or battery powered electric trolley. Before using either system, the operator should ensure there is sufficient deionized water in the topping bottle or trolley. 
To use the pressure bottle or trolley, first pressurise it by pumping the handle on top of the unit. When pressurised, connect the male connector on the battery with the female connector on the bottle or trolley. A flow indicator on the supply line should start to turn to show that water is flowing into the single point filling system. It is always preferable to make and break this connection outside the battery case in case the connections leak onto the battery tops and into the tank. Once the wheel stops turning, the operator should check all the cat's eyes have reached the top of the filling caps and that the bottle or pressure trolley has not just run out of deionised water. The indicator light should also be flashing green. When using the electric trolley, the operator should follow the same procedure, but instead of pressurising the trolley, they should switch it on at the on-off switch. Once completed, any water spillage on the battery lids should be removed and the male filling connector replaced in a safe position to avoid any damage. If any damage is seen to have occurred to the bottle or trolley, filling caps, pipework or electrolyte level light, it should be reported to a supervisor or manager. 1. Use only deionised water. 2. Only fill a battery when it is fully charged. 3. Never use the cat's eyes as a required topping indication. 4. Always clean off spilt water. 5. Report all damage or malfunction or concerns to a supervisor or manager.